stay. Stay. Good boy. Leave it on the plate. <laughs> Any moose? All gone. Hey young guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job we have something a little bit different. This is an ejector cylinder out of a 657 scraper. This is one of two cylinders that is mounted in the back of a 657. They are a telescopic cylinder, so they are a two-stage ram. The reason there are two in a 657 is because they are a twin drive machine, so there's a big engine diff and gearbox mounted in the back, and they are used for then ejecting the material out of the machine. These aren't a general part that I would have anything to do with the repair, other than the I reclaim but this one has come in with an unusual crack in a very unusual spot there is a crack all the way around the rod just behind the eye this is the first time I've actually seen a failure like this to fail where it did the customer didn't actually share how this failed having a look at the way the crack has actually formed it looks like the cylinder has had a side loading and the only way that would really happen is something's got down through the back of the machine maybe the ejector door hasn't been correctly adjusted they do have rollers on the bottom and the sides to keep it in line with the bowl. If it was out of adjustment or something had failed within the door, it could have then applied a side load onto the cylinder rod itself, which could have formed that crack. This is sort of one of those repairs that nobody would attempt because of what actually happens inside the cylinder. It is quite specialized to the way it works. To replace this part is about $17,000, and I don't believe there's any stock here in Australia, which means it would be up to a three month wait coming in from overseas. So being that this is a double acting telescopic cylinder, they are a little bit different on the inside to how they work. There are a few channels where oil must go through in order for the cylinder to work correctly. So the easiest way to explain that is to try and blow some smoke of some nature down the inside to show you where it comes out on the rod. On the end of the cylinder rod there are two oil ports. One of them is labelled retract, one of them is labelled extend. When the oil is put through the extension it comes down through the rod into the next stage and then into the barrel that then extends the cylinder and pushes the ejector door open. When you want to retract the cylinder oil is fed in through the other other side and it is sealed off from this inner tube so then that oil comes out of these holes here oil then returns back to the tank through the extension side and that closes the cylinder and the threaded holes that are on the end of the rod they are actually for the piston so the piston bolts on the end and that then connects the second stage to the first stage so it was very interesting doing the smoke test that there was no smoke actually came out of the crack I could just grind that out and weld that back up again but the thing I'm concerned about is because this has now got a crack in it whether the inner tube has been stretched or it now has a crack so if I was just to grind this out and weld it up and there is a crack on the inner tube it is not going to cycle it's just going to bypass oil and it's going to stay locked in one position so we do need to get that off and inspect the inside to see if there was any damage done to the inner feed tube this wasn't a repair that anyone was willing to attempt after having a talk to the customer about it we agreed that there is nothing to lose we can give it a go and if it works we're going to save them seventeen thousand dollars so what i need to do now i need to take this over to the lathe get it set up and start getting it apart
Right, so we've got that set up in the lathe now. I did use my four jaw and my centering plug to get the head of the cylinder rod in alignment. I also used my tailstock chuck and my three jaw to then align that end. I dialed that in. I've now set up a steady, taken the tailstock away so I can start to remove the weld on the end of the inner tube on this end of the rod. We're not too concerned about the chrome because there is a crack up there and it is damaged and that is within the working area. It will need to be reclaimed if the repair is successful. So we can just start machining. skim off this. Right, so now that I've got that little weld removed, I need to completely change the setup and I need to move the steady onto this side of the carriage so I can have the carriage at that end so I can then go in and machine out that crack. Quite often with a job like this, it is the setups that start to take a lot of time. But it is what it is and that's what we need to do. Righto, so I've machined out the crack and what looks to me that I have found is the join between the eye of the cylinder and the rod itself. I'm going to assume there is a spigot that goes down inside the rod a little bit, but I would not have expected a join to be there. I would have expected it to be closer to the eye of the rod. Now it makes more sense as to why the crack started there. What I need to do now, I need to try and separate those two. So I'm going to take it out of the lathe. I'm going to apply a little bit of heat to the rod, try and get it to expand and let go of the eye itself. So let's try that.
Right, guys, so that went really, really well. A little bit of heat and it just sort of fell apart. It turned out my suspicion was correct. That was a spigot and that is where the weld joint actually is. Now that it is apart, it's a lot easier to see how the cylinder actually works, how the oil flows in and the oil flows out and what it does. What I need to do now, I need to crack test the inner tube to make sure that joint is okay. If that's fine, we can then put it back together. So I've performed a crack test on that. There is a bit of a suspicious area. I'm not gonna go and put this back together. I'm gonna do further investigation on it. So I'm gonna take it over to our welding area. I'm gonna get a wire wheel on a grinder. I'm gonna clean that right up and I'm gonna do another crack test on it. So let's see how that goes. Doesn't like whatever that is. I'm doing it again. Why is it not drying like normal? Righto guys, so I was a little bit concerned about one area. I've been having a little bit of trouble with the floor check system on this material. It doesn't seem to like it. It's not drying off properly. Could be due to the weather. It is quite cold outside. Rather than risk it, I've actually capped the end of the hydraulic pipe off and I have filled it with petrol. And that is another way to find out whether there is a crack or a gap that any sort of moisture or anything can get through. So that's been sitting in there for the past 20 minutes. Nothing has leached out of it. So I'm gonna assume it's just the undercut of the weld that is giving the appearance that there could be a crack there. Pretty happy with that. I'll drain out all the petrol and we can start getting this thing back together.
Right, I guess that weld is all cooled down now. What I need to do is take it back over to the lathe and I need to machine this weld down. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit below the current surface height of the chrome layer. And the reason I'm doing that is when they go to put on the new HVOF layer, they're gonna grind it anyway. So I'll give them a head start, machine that down and make it a bit easier for the next guy. Right, I guess so I've machined that weld down. I'm a little bit below the finished surface of what the rod is going to be. So what I need to do now, I do need to take it over to the welding area and TIG that tube back into the end of the cylinder. But before I do that, I'm gonna take it over to the rotator and I'm gonna grind off that weld spatter. Right, righto guys, so I'm about to TIG this tube back into the end of the rod. I'm gonna be using a 200 amp ACDC Unimig TIG welder for this. Because I don't do a great deal of TIGging anymore, the little ACDC machine is fantastic for these sort of jobs. I don't need anything more powerful and I don't do enough aluminium to warrant buying something better. I'll be running 100% pure argon. The filler material will be ER70S2. So I'll do one pass around it, clean that off, then I'll put a second pass over the top just to replicate what was already there and make sure that tube seals up really nicely.
Right on guys, so the job is done. That was a successful repair. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Even though this repair looked very, very simple, the inside and the complexity of the way this works is very important that it is done correctly. If you get it wrong, you pretty much take the part and throw it in the bin. We were very lucky that our customer was willing to give it a go just to see if it could be done. Now, since we've repaired it, we can get it back to our customer. They'll send it away, have this outer coating uh, ground off it and they'll have a new HVOF layer put on, ground back to size and they can put this back into service. So if anyone has actually spotted the threads in the holes on the bottom of the rod, those threads are for grub screws and they are used during the reclaiming process of the rod. Whoever's doing the repair will screw grub screws into those holes which will stop any debris or material that they spray onto the rod getting down inside the cylinder. And then once the layer is done, they'll then grind it back to size and they can remove those grub screws without putting any foreign material inside. So the repair is done. We've saved them a heap of money. We're going to get it back to them. Thanks for watching. Very good. First take, wow. That's pretty good, eh? <laughs> Continue. I've been practicing. <laughs> um, fuck, we need to look down here. So, oh, fuck. We need to explain this bit first. I'm just gonna start again. Are you ready? Right. So in that video is the footage of the Right, so or so, or so, or so. <laughs> so then I can move the carriage up to here and I can start attacking that crack to see how this is going to come apart. I'm sorry, attacking yeah. the crack. <laughs> we found it about an inch and a half or 45. Oh, Shouldn't talk in bananas. Hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Ragman. Oh my god. Is that? how it was. That's how the rag came out of the bin. <laughs> I'm a superhero. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that. That's some shit. Oh, is that it? Okay. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. Hey. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Come here. Here, sit. Sit. Well, that one is my cake. Drop it. Drop it. 